have I been arrested lately? Not this year. It, and it it does make you wonder: Am I am I doing things right? You know. <laughs> We, we kind of tell the kids in our neighborhood, you can get arrested for doing things that are wrong, and you can also get arrested for doing things that are right. So when we get arrested, <laughs> we're, hopefully we're doing things right. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, no, I, I mean, I, I love talking about Jesus. And I, I love talking about how our faith has to affect the way that we live in the world. Uh, and, 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 you know, I, I think it's an exciting time for that because folks are – uh, aware that the world that we see right now is very fragile. And I think people are tired of militarism and wars, and they've felt the empty promises of materialism. And, uh, and so it's, it's a fun time. Yeah. The book we've been working on is uh, it's called Common Prayer. And uh, uh, it, it's a book of, of prayer to, to try to get the church praying together um, across streams and traditions. And so uh, it goes with the, the calendar year um, and has prayers for each day that are also based out of the larger church calendar and the lectionary and all that. But it, it's, it's an entryway, I think, for a lot of people who are only used to doing personal devotions or something to feel themselves praying with the rest of the church. <laughs> I, I love George Fox, and I don't just say that everywhere I am. Um, but uh, th this this really is a place where, uh, you know, I've, I've been here a, a bunch of times, and every time it seems like there are people that um, are are really thinking deeply about the way that we live in the world and our witness, not just with our words, but with our lives. Um, and, and and it's one of those one of those places where. Um, I, I'm, I'm really encouraged by the integrity that uh, people try to live out their, their faith or, or even just try to live out their conscience of loving their neighbor and loving um, the people uh, around the world and, and trying to repair what's broken in the world. Um, so I think th this place is asking the right questions or provoking the right questions for, for students that want to do something meaningful for God in the world. John Perkins since he's living, you know, and he's mm -hmm. been here to George Fox, uh, and John's just a hero and, and kind of a spiritual father of mine. Well, I, I love the circus. I don't know if you know that, but I, 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 went, I went to circus school when I was in high school, and, and uh, that was before I started working in the church, and um, and then I found out there's not a whole lot of difference, you know. But the, the circus, like, I, I learned to juggle and uh, unicycle and stilt walk and fire breathe. But I, I, um, I love that stuff. So that's what we do in our neighborhood, too, you know. And, and uh, the kids, are just, they, they're used to it. You know, they're like, yeah, he's 11 feet tall. But, uh, what? You know, it's a great way to dis diffuse a fight, too. You know, when somebody's fighting on the corner, you just come out juggling torches. And the kids are like, fight, fight. Whoa, forget that. Come over here, you know. Yeah, to be honest, I've got a lot of techie friends, and so they, they hook me up to where I look like I'm like Mr. Gadget, you know? Um, but really, I, if there's any hiccup in the system, everything falls apart, you know? <laughs> no, but like all my phone messages come onto my computer, you know, and things. But yeah, I've been thinking about getting you know, one of those um, things that has music on it so I can travel. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, music is a good thing. So yeah, I don't know, though. What do you do? Well, the simpleway.org is my f no. I, 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 uh, I th there's there's a lot of different uh, places that I go to for information. You know, I, I think it's important to try to figure out uh, ways to get the the real news of what's what's out there. So we don't have a television, but we do get a lot of news off of the the internet. You know, and um, I post pretty regularly on God's Politics uh, website, and then we've got a website called. Red Letter Christians that links up uh, a lot of different things going on in the world. And um, we've got a website, uh, Community of Communities, that just links up a ton of different communities. So um, even though we help create those, they don't feel like they're ours, but they feel like they're just harmonizing different people and different communities. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm all about that. My unicycle, you mean? Yeah, if you, if you take, take my things but if you take my unicycle yeah no i i like chocolate a, a lot um yeah I, I don't know i i, I we had a big fire two few years ago and it burnt up most everything so okay. <laughs>
I I guess so. It's not necessarily. A, that, I guess it's how you keep the simple way simple. Is just have that fire every few years. Yeah. But. Oh, I I um. But there's a few things. One of them is uh um, I have a spit phobia. Okay. Yeah. Is this a safe place? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I really do. I have. A, I have. A, I have a, and, and and like my buddy Chris, who you may talk with, he's here with me. Like he 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 always will, will just like I'll go to the bathroom and he'll lick my coffee cup or something just to try to cure me of it. It's really sick. He's 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 a sick man. Um, but you know I, I like I I haven't gotten over that. I think it's because I was raised an only child, so I, I can't eat after people. I can't drink after people. You know. And the other thing is I, I do I do, I am known for a little bit of a um, obsession with. Um, like uh, excellence around uh, like writing and things like that around like if there's a typo in our newsletter, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I, I just reprinted a, a bunch. So now every letter that I write is on the back of the old newsletter with all the typos, you know, because I have to recycle them and I'm recycling like a thousand pieces of paper, you know. So yeah. Uh, Emmanuel Katangala, who's been out here at George Fox, he, he wrote a great book called Mirror to the Church. It's about the situation in Rwanda uh, around the genocide and how it's a mirror to the rest of the church of both healing and uh, uh, reconciliation, but also of how our tribalism and how our you know nationalism or whatever our identities are can create tremendous violence if they trump our Christian identity. I don't know that there's an anecdote for you know how do how, how do we make the world a better place, but I, I think that what we can do is is every one of us can ask how have the how do the gifts that I've been given intersect with the brokenness of the world that we live in, and then what's exciting is you, is you don't just have one kind of cookie cutter, but you've got doctors that are asking that question, you've got engineers, you've got biologists, you've got folks that are all asking like what does it mean to seek first the kingdom of God on earth, not the best job or the highest paying wage or something like that, but like, like how, what, what does it mean to really use the gifts and passions, the things that I've lear learned in college um, to, to try to uh, be a, a part of uh, the, the midwiving, you know, of, of the, the pregnancy of this, this kingdom and the coming dream of God on earth. And, uh, and when we do that, I, I think we, we have a whole lot more beautiful vision than just, you know, some answer that I can give. Right. One of the prayers I have on my wall says, God, forgive me for thinking too highly of myself. And then it says, God, forgive me for thinking too lowly of myself. And then it says, God, forgive me for thinking of myself so stinking much. <laughs> and that's my prayer, and I think it's my confession, too, is, you know, I think sometimes we, we, we think that this is uh, about us, and then you start to sabotage any influence you have if you think that, oh, well, that's bad. And I think you get to a point where you just go, hey, if God should choose to use us, then, then we, we thank God for it, and we don't mm -hmm. think too highly of ourselves. God can speak through donkeys or rocks or, you know, whatever, so. Oh man, am I on the market? It sounds like I'm being sold. Uh, I have never really taken a vow of celibacy, um, but I have felt the freedom of singleness as it allows me to, to pursue a lot of the things that I would say, you know, God wants me to. I, I've dated a few people over the last 10 years and uh, just had a relationship that, that uh, Ended uh, this this month, but uh, I'm, I'm not saying that's a, a wide open invitation. <laughs> but I'm I'm really uh, I, I'm grateful to be working that out and have a community that's working through that with me. You know, and and the question I'm always asking is, what allows me to pursue Jesus with the most single mindedness? And uh, um, is, is that alone with God, or is it with another person? Uh, so.